What's going to happen, Gwen? <laughs> oh, man. Well, this week has been quite the term. What is up, boys and girls? Welcome to a very special episode of The Slip Angle. We have our special guest here. This is a longtime friend and old co-worker of mine, Mr. Very Felix old. Espinoza. Hello. He uh, came by tonight in his 2021 GR Supra, A91. A90, A90. Oh, it's still A90. It's I thought still that, A90. So oh. they only made special editions, or like the launch edition, A91. Gotcha. So. Okay, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. But it's the, it's, the, it's the revised engine Correct. model. Yes, revised yeah. engine. Okay, yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning. Yep. So this was the same year where they changed it so there was an available four-cylinder and a, the, the manual with the six-cylinder. Yes, is it the yes, same yes. year? Okay. Yep, yep. This is the horsepower increase here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, Felix, tell us a little bit about your background, your drifting background, why you, what brought you to this car, <laughs> what you had. Um, yeah, we'll go so from there. Uh, I have to say it started with you, right? Uh, I was driving the Dodge Intrepid. I really wasn't <laughs> into the car game. Uh, and then I met him, you know, working. And so he, every day, he was like, you need to trade that truck in and get a, get a car. <laughs> so I was looking. I was looking for quite some time. Uh, and then I... You know, jumped right into a 350Z, 2006. Well, before you before you tell him that, uh, yeah. do you remember? I, I just I just had a flashback. Do you yeah. remember I took you for a ride in the Turbo Miata? Yes, that's literally what changed everything for me. Because I I was like, I, you know, he was like, oh, I have Miatas, and you know, I, I do stuff. <laughs> so he, you know, we drove his Turbo Miata, and he slid uh, right into the entry of the highway, and I was like, oh, this is what cars can do. <laughs> and I that actually night. <laughs> literally opened my world to a bunch of things right because you actually had great taste in cars uh, you wow. did very tasteful mods to your cars so and that's stuff i was made. on a yeah i was on a venture for like i need a car i need a real wheel drive car and i you know jumped right into a 2006 nissan 350z uh and i still own that car um and so that car uh went from you know being my daily car to then jumping into autocross did autocross for about a year, got very bored of it. Uh, then I jumped right into drifting. Um, and now that car is completely full drift ready, full, you know, uh, eight point cage, uh, everything you can think of in a drift car, it's, it's, it's done. And I love it. So I went from that to then owning, uh, you know, E90 series BMW N54, uh, enjoyed that sold that then i jumped into a z4 e89 with the same n54 engine loved it i you know modded it had coilovers lowered it you know it was great it was a wonderful car but for about six months i've been looking at purchasing a newer vehicle and this is the newer vehicle and i will have to say i do not regret any of it uh, i sold the z4 uh, to upgrade to this uh, which is a 2021 toyota gr supra it's an absolute zero, but it does have stealth PPF on it. So it has that matte look and it, it is the auto. So it is the eight speed ZF. And I have to say, I have no complaints about it. Uh, not a single bit as a, as a sports car. Um, I can get into it, get groceries, go CVS and, you know, drive normal. And then if I want to go crazy, you know, put it in sports mode and I have a blast. And there's not a single part of this car that I don't enjoy, honestly. So, so I want to I want to just like take a little little fun <laughs> fact. My first time truly drifting on track was under Felix's instruction in his 350Z, <laughs> yes, yes. and I was like, "Holy shit, Z cars drift so much easier and <laughs> yes. nicer than any stinking Miata." Yes. So, there was that. I do remember that. That was actually a great time too. And we both had matching uh, personal Neo Grinta suede. Uh, you know, I got that one stolen from me. Come on. I, I, that hurts me so much out of everything I'm, that I've done to my 350. That, that got stolen from me. And Ugh. I could not find another one within a normal price range. Yeah. And oh, they're expensive now. They're expensive. So that hurts me to the fullest because that was my favorite. Because you told me, you're like, get the steering wheel. I was like, <laughs> uh. Then I drove that steering wheel and I, was, I never looked back. I bought another personal, uh, same steering wheel, but in red stitching. Yep. Unfortunately. But... Yeah, I love that. I love that green. I love green. Right? I'm, so. I'm about to drop four hundred and fifty dollars on another stupid green, which is like four hundred and fifty dollars for this. It was ridiculous, and I was and it, it saddened me because I feel like whoever took it knew about the steering wheel because not a lot of people just go into a car and be like, "I'm going right. to steal the steering wheel." Oh yeah, hundred percent. Right? So, but yeah, 
we, we've had a lot of history. And like, <laughs> honestly, the reason why I'm here is because of Quinn. Um, I've never, I've never thought I would be into cars as much as I was if it wasn't for him. And he kind of, you know, showed me the way as I was being an ignorant asshole about a lot of things. Oh, I would, but I, let's, let's just rewind. Or say like, arrogant. I, I was an arrogant asshole. No, we yeah. used to argue all the time. But that I know was because I was like an asshole. Like, no, yeah, but you were trying to steer me the right way, right? Instead of you know blacking out my wheels with plasti dip and well, you know, doing stuff like that, you actually was like, why don't you get real wheels? Why don't you do things that actually matter? And I think the first mods I did was steering wheel and seat and tires and suspension. Yeah. But the best mods were steering wheel and seat, and everyone made fun of me. They're like, you're never going to drift this or track it. And then when I started drifting, those were the greatest mods I did Your to the vehicle. Your car bone stock with just, like, suspension <laughs> was, like, excellent yes, to drift. Agreed, excellent. Agree. Agree. So, so, yeah, that thing has now just, you know, it's definitely completely, completely modded now. So that's where it got me to. I wanted a car that I can just get in and drive and feel comfortable and not feel like, I'm getting into a race car, right? Or yep. I'm, I feel like I'm, I have to do all this extra stuff to have fun. I can literally turn, get in this car, turn it on, and just drive. So, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Felix in a couple years. Yes. We just like, you messaged me the other day. Yeah. And in the midst of like conversation, <laughs> sorry, I'm out of frame. In the midst of our conversation, he mentioned that he bought a GR Super, and I was like, oh shit, like, this has been like the car that we keep talking about, like as like if I'm gonna buy like a modern car, like I think I would I would probably lean towards buying a GR Supra. Um, and it's funny because like especially this week, I've like really had the bug. I'm like, it, it, I just had this moment. I'm like, oh shit, manual rear wheel drive sports cars are kind of like a dying breed. Definitely. Maybe I should just go put an order in for a GR Supra. And the problem is I've never even seen one in person other than like from like, I don't know, 15 feet away. I never paid too much attention to them prior because they were all automatics. But now with the manual option, it's like it's more appealing to me. And like, listen, there's this, the test drive tonight, the ZF gearbox in this thing is awesome. Sure. And the car's freaking properly fast with that for a stock car, like stock car out of the box, properly fast. But... I'm old, you know, FUD man, get off my lawn. Mm. I just like, I like a good old fashioned manual. Oh, you're manual. Right. Yeah. You know, I, like, I, don't, I can't it. argue that. That's why I hop in my 350, right? If yeah. I really want to. But that's my thing. Like you said, it's, there's nothing wrong with this car. And we have to re reiterate, it's stock. Yes. There's no modifications to this car at all. So I want to talk about this because mm. a lot of stuff transpired tonight. I drove the car. Matthew drove the car, who's behind the camera right now. I mean, you drive it every day, <laughs> or almost every day, or whatever. Yep, yep. But let's let's just go over a couple things here, which were, were very revealing to me seeing this in person. And then we're going to sit down, and we're going to talk about our driving impressions and what other cars can you possibly get this much value for for the money. All right? You think, does that sound yeah. good? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. We'll sit. I got a little bit of wine in me, yeah. so like. It's, uh... <laughs> All right. Anyways. Uh, why don't we start on the front here? This is the business end of the car. In photos, I never thought this car looked as pretty. But in person, this is a beautiful front bumper. And this is probably like one of the only factory cars where I say, wow, that doesn't need a front lip. That doesn't need an aftermarket bumper. That doesn't need anything. And Felix's car is 100% stock, but he had all the matte plastics wrapped in gloss, or they came wrapped in gloss. Right, right. And holy shit, like this looks elegant. Mm -hmm. This actually looks very, very nice in person. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm burping. <laughs> love the nose, love the headlights, the LEDs are really cool. It's just, Matt, tell, give your impressions of it. I'm, I'm rambling now. I mean, you know, I hadn't really taken a really close look at, at one of these in person either. Um, I've seen a few of them at like track days and stuff, but like, like yeah, like like you said, like looking at the details, like I always thought that like the FT1 concept car like exaggerated that like kind of F1 nose. Yes. And I was always disappointed looking at photos because it didn't seem like it was as as exaggerated. But in person, like you really do see the the design cues from like the the, the FT1 concept in this, and it it looks right. awesome. And another it's, thing, it's I, untouched. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't no, mean to cut right. you off. Say, finish your sentence? No, that was, I was finished. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> Another thing I just want to point out, like just for, for sake of like reference, right? The dimensions on this car, this is 174 inches long. This is, this is the nerd in me coming out, because like, I'm, like I'm a spec sheet guy. My RX-8 is 174 inches long. This car is 51 inches tall. The stock S2000 is 50, 50 inches tall. My Z4M is 50 inches tall, stock. Mm -hmm. uh, RX-8 is somewhere above that. I don't remember what it is, but it's, it's higher. Width-wise, this is wider. It's three inches wider than my Z4M. Z4M is um, 70.1 wide. This is 73 inches wide. This is a nice, beautiful, wide, aggressive front end and very sleek with those headlights. But I it's always not thought- It's not too long. Cars like the S2000, yeah, it's not too long at all. The proportions are great for a modern sports car. Um, I always thought cars with pointier Japanese styled like headlights like the S2000 and the RX-8 like look good and this is just like even more exaggerated in that pointiness. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. Um, you know, and this takes a lot of the styling cues from the Z4M. Like the Z4M would maybe be like a Mark four and a half Supra where you're sitting well behind the rear wheels. Mm -hmm. You know, I gotta say I'm something. Sorry, right like, next to the rear wheels. Yeah. Here you go, man. Like you go. we 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 had it. We made a video, and it's gonna release before this one. Yes. Where we talked about the Z4M comparing to like the look of the A9, the the newer Supra. Mm -hmm. um, I said I didn't think that it was gonna be like as classic looking, you know, long term as the, as the Z4M. And I, like after seeing this in person, like I, I I take it back. Like this car. Like from for for a modern day sports car is like killed it in the look departments for a factory vehicle. Yep, you don't have to touch it. This is going to age well. Yep. There's modern cars like I say this about the C7 Corvette. The C7 Corvette is not aging well. I think that's going to be like the future C4. People are going to disagree <laughs> with me, but like that like lip kit upon lip kit thing and like yeah. just the design, the edginess of it. I think that's going to be like I think a C6. Z06 is like way prettier than a C7. I like the C5 personally. Yeah, I'm a, C fa I'm a fan. I know it's got the, like the cat, the Cavalier interior and stuff like that, but like just the outside look of it, I've been a, always a big fan. But that's that's not what we're talking about today. So all right, so hold on. Yeah. Let, let, let's let's yeah. keep let's get through the exterior of the <laughs> yes, car. Yes, exactly. Um, the factory lip kit, which almost looks aftermarket, um, but in a good way, not like in a bad way. It everything everything on this car flows real. Like you said, it Felix. There's not a boring angle on this car for like more than like a foot. Sure. This double bubble roof line. Oh yeah. And, it, and this nice smooth sweeping fastback. So sleek. It reminds me of a Japanese Dodge Viper. And I love the look of the Dodge Viper, right? If you look at a Dodge Viper, especially from like a rear three quarter angle, mm -hmm. it's got a really like cool aesthetic to it. Again, you know, mid engine cars and, 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 and they always have that exoticness to them, right? But for me personally, I always find myself gravitating more towards the, you know, S2000, Z4M, where you're sitting right above the rear wheels, right? And you get that more long, exaggerated front hood, the penis hood. <laughs> phallic, phallic cars, baby. They're where it's at. And this is very hippie. You got a big curvy oh, yeah. hip here in the I rear. Was, I was love look, loving looking at the hips through the rear view mirrors. Mm -hmm. it get, but the car gets better as you go behind it. Like the Z4 yep. like kind of just gets cut flat. It's like a pug dog, right? <laughs> Where this like, it's like, okay, we're going to let the curve come out. We have an integrated duckbill in the trunk, like right from the factory. You have these beautiful cut tail lights. I haven't really noticed how nice the tail lights were. And then were. even the back, this is a pretty, like a very, very pretty car in, in, in modern car standards. Like, you know, modern cars have their own aesthetic, right? Mm -hmm. But this is something that like doesn't look like anything else that's out there right now. And then also he, the rear valance here, which is matte plastic, right? Yep. Is wrapped in the gloss black vinyl. Mm -hmm. And that just, it, it looks beautiful. Other than that though, this car is completely stock. Yep, correct. So like a set of wheels, and a little bit lower, this is a beautiful car. And maybe like if you're a little extra rice right, like me, <laughs> an extended duck bill. That's it. And just to add a little bit, so like I like you're saying here, for me, going through pictures, going through videos, I was never able to really see the lines or Yes. You know, like this roof line, I never saw in any videos or pictures, right? There's nothing that really says looks at that. But when you see it in person, it's just like, wow, that flows so amazingly. Like, there's no, like I said, there's nothing boring at any point of this car when you look at it. It, it present, it's, it's so much prettier in person mm -hmm. than it is in photos. Right. Right. 
And come here real quick, and we'll, before we we'll have we'll sit down and like start going with driving impressions. And you, and it's so funny because Felix said the same thing. And I, and this is my gripe. I don't think I ever said this in the podcast, but I told this to Matt. I said. The Supra, I think, is a really pretty car for modern car standards. Like, and I got that from just from photos. But I said the interior just looks a little bit plain and like BMW-ish. Mm -hmm. In person, this interior looks completely different. And he said the same thing mm -hmm. that when he was shopping these out, he looked at it. Again, you know, this is just a video. It's probably not going to present the same. But the interior looks way, way more sporty. Um, upscale, nice in person. I'm, I'm so happy to actually see this and, and, and get a gauge on it. Like, cause that was like kind of the one hang up I had about the so, car. I'm like, man, I'm like for 60 grand, like I feel like this interior should have like a little bit more like right. specialness to it. Right. But it felt super upscale. But yeah. it's, but it's subtle yeah. enough when you're actually in that you actually feel like you're in a sporty vehicle, but oh, you yeah. also feel like you're hugged, right? You feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. You feel like you can breathe in it. You feel like you can actually enjoy a long drive, or oh. you know, in the back rows. You know, you you any any time or any point you want to drive this car, you can drive it feeling very comfortable. This has sport meets grand touring like combined. Yes. It's good. Yes, people complain about the visibility out of it, but it's like I have short, narrow windshields on these cars. Like it's not that much like more limited in this. Right. Right. It's proper. Like it's proper sports car feel. I don't care what anybody says. Like. I, I like smaller windscreens. Like right. that's that's an aesthetic cue, and like that's a function cue of like a proper, you know, FR sports car. And like Felix said, the seats are are really good. I wouldn't change these seats. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there's probably a weight savings for them, but they're power. They're heated. They look nice. They got leather contrasting leather stitching. They, the bolstering is great. Yeah, they actually keep me in my. Seat. They hold you, and like you can do long journeys on these seats. Like that's important, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't look at this car as a race car. I'm not looking at this from Same. like I'm gonna go try to win races because like who, what are you racing this in, other than like a time attack series, right? right? right. But then that's a, that's a whole other ballpark. Right. There's no spec series for this car. Like this is and, and 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 this is like true to the super ethos. Like when you when I hear a super, I never think of like a time like. A fast time attack car. Yes, there were some time attack Supras, but they were always beat by other cars. The Supra is a fast street car. And like, it's like almost like, it's like Grand Touring meets sports car. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the new Supra holds to that ethos, like just as the Mark IV did, but like almost even better now because like the car does everything better than a Mark IV. I'm, I'm going into the driving impression. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get, sit down and we'll talk about this. It's such a nice looking car. It's it funny because uh, I had someone say, "Do you really want to go to BM, you know, from BMW to Toyota?" And I was like, "You have no clue. You have no yeah. clue." Yeah. Someone said that. Yeah. I was like, "You have no clue." Plus, it's a Supra, right? That's yeah. all I need to say. So. This is definitely like breathed upon heavily by Toyota. Yeah. You yeah. can oh, you yeah. can feel the Japanese like, you know, you I going into like my Z4M. One of the biggest differences that I always notice is like that German cars drive very differently than Japanese cars. At least like, you know, most of the late 90s, like two, early 2000s, right? Because that's what I have the most experience in. But like driving this around, I felt like I was driving a Japanese car. Mm -hmm. You know, the agree. efforts are easier. I would totally agree on that. They don't, they're not as like exhausting to like maneuver. Sorry, what were you gonna say, Matt? Oh, nothing I was gonna. Shout out to Tommy's drink. I'm about to try it for the first time. Oh, yeah. So um, what's it called? No car? I think it just stands for no carbonation. Yeah, it's no carbonation. This is this is Tommy Fia's, uh HK inspired, or I'm sorry, HKS yeah. inspired color scheme, non-alcoholic, or I'm sorry, it is alcoholic, non-carbonated beverage. That's good. Good. Pina colada. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. It's just what it tastes like. Bacca Does it taste pineapple. like JDM land? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, I wish I got to hustle the car a little bit, but like I'm not gonna do that in a street car, you know. Felix was I, nice. You were nice enough to let me drive this. Like I, we, I literally met him today, and he's like, <laughs> like le letting me drive his Supra, and like that. I, I appreciate that. I really like, you know, that was very nice of you to share your car with me. Um, but like, it, it felt fantastic. It's like wonderfully damped. Um, those autos are so good. Yeah. Like it's unbelievable that that's an automatic transmission. It's fast. Yeah. For stock car, it like never loses power. Yep. Like it's just pull, pull, pull the entire time. Eight so speeds. Yeah. You got eight gears where you're like always in the power band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It um it reminded me like the power delivery and how in like using the paddle shifters reminded me of um Rudd's 135i. Mm -hmm. Very similar, like like super fast gear changes. And that's an actual double clutch. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um 
Yeah, it just felt incredible. I, but I, this, I this around like slow speed, oh, but way again, nicer. But it doesn't have the issues that the double clutches have. To slip. have. Yeah, yep. exactly. It doesn't have to slip like the double clutch. Like it's, it's and that's. I'm did sorry. Everything. It just did everything perfectly. Like I didn't even have to like. <laughs> I had it in full manual mode, and like I pulled up to a stop sign that just knew exactly what gear to be in, and it was I, just. I think that's why BMW stopped with the with the DCTs. Mm -hmm. Is because the the around town and in traffic stuff like was like roasting those clutches. Yeah, I was about to say I did. I, I experienced that with my Z4, and it was something that I I got used to. Mm -hmm. So when I got into this, was that a double clutch? Yep. Oh. So like that's why I was very comfortable with going from staying with auto, right? Because I was very happy with the DCT, but I do agree, like driving around, you know, just traffic, and it did seem quite annoying. I had to definitely throw it into just regular drive and, you know, get out of the, you know, manual mode. Um, but I have to say with this, it doesn't matter if I'm in manual mode or not. Like, like you said, it handles anything I tell it to do no. wonderfully, right? So they definitely tune both the transmission and, and the engine very well. Yeah, uh, for this platform, honestly. So. I, I would say, like, if I was like, <laughs> like, I would daily something like this. Sure. If like money was like no object, and like I was just you gonna have, have to. if I was gonna pick like some like dump, yeah, like some sports car to like daily on, like I would, I would totally rock this for a daily. The auto is that good in it. Yeah, it really is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I mean. I never thought I would be saying this because like for the last, since like the Gen 5 Viper, that was like kind of the last car that like kind of piqued my interest. Like nothing, nothing out there. I was like, I'm done. I got the best of the best. Like I'm good. But you know, I can't, I can't walk away from the looks of this because this is a sharp looking car. Mm -hmm. You know, I missed out on a Mark IV. I missed out on an NSX. They're too expensive for what they are. Mm -hmm. Like at, I, at I the just, end of the day, you're in a nineties cockpit. Like, like, yeah, and like I, I have my fast I 90s it. car. Yeah. <laughs> I have my RX-7. Yep. That's my fast 90s car. But like, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know where to start with this. Uh, <laughs> we did. The, oh, well, I did a review before you were on board of a 2016 Porsche 911 mm -hmm. GT3 991 PDK, 475 horsepower, 9,000 RPM, naturally aspirated. That car was one of the best factory setup cars I had ever, ever experienced. And I was like, okay. The 90s and 2000 cars are done because this car is like basically like the cheater car. Mm -hmm. It's like there was a time when a modified 90s, early 2000s car kept up with the newer stuff and like, or it would be faster than it. It made sense. The new stuff, like with the development into them, it's just, they're too good. It's just a different, it's a different breed of car, right? I felt that in this car tonight and I, and I, and I didn't, I guess like I'm not surprised, but like I am a little bit surprised, right? Because like the GT3 is a hundred and sixty thousand yeah, dollar car price point for sixty grand for a premium, right? Like you can even go cheaper if you get just the base. Mm -hmm. It's like this car is a cheater car. It has that cheater car esqueness to it. This is a fast car for that money. It looks amazing. Mm -hmm. It sounds really good. It's nice and comfortable. It's quiet. Mm -hmm. It's like holy shit, man. <laughs> like, it's it's a it's a fucking awesome car. Yeah, it is. It's the real deal. Yeah. It's the real deal. Yeah, and and people like like people have things so many things to complain about. They complain about like the visibility through this, the the windshield, and it's like, dude, it's seriously? like drive a real sports car. Yeah. Like like sports cars are supposed to be a little bit uncompromising, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They're not supposed to like coddle you in every everything. Yeah, like you can make the argument of the M2, but like, what, what's the new M2? Thirty-eight hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah, and they've had to add so much more horsepower just to keep up with the previous generation. And like, not to mention like modern. The one thing that like is is a tough sell on modern cars is the weights. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Toyota or whatever, BMW, whoever did the, sus the the suspension engineering on this, right? It's all aluminum. The subframes aluminum. The control arms are aluminum. Oh, wow, I didn't realize. Oh the yeah. Were. So, like, when you compare this to, like, a, a, a new Nissan Z, the Z is all steel. The Z is heavier, subsequently, right? No surprise there. The Z doesn't have, you can see the, clearly see the door panels are from a 370. You just kind of <laughs> recycled, right? Like, well, yeah, the whole chassis is 370. It's, it's just I pissed and moaned engine. so much about this car because of the um, auto and, the, and, the, and the, uh, the BMW collaboration. But it's, like, 
Toyota's reasoning for doing that. So like Toyota, like I think Toyota builds quality product overall. I'm happy. I love my Lexus. Mm -hmm. Super was rugged as hell. You know, like Toyota like has built a lot of like good cars. They said that they're able to offer this car at the price point that they're doing because of the collaboration with BMW. No R and D for an engine. Right. So I think for Toyota to put their stamp of approval on this motor says something. And maybe I'm wrong. This is speculation, right? Mm -hmm. I do know that like for the manual transmission version, Toyota went through the gearbox. It's different. And everybody says that the, the shifter feel and, and everything in that gearbox is nicer than the, the equivalent like M2 BMW. Right. Right. Great. Right? Um, I'm just, I guess like I'm going back to like, I'm just like dumbfounded and surprised. And like, you know, we talk about this all the time. Every single time we do a Every podcast. single time. What is actually worth owning at this point? Because like, I feel like most of the greats have already been out there. But like, I, you know, I reserve the right to change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and this car is, is proof of that. And, and this is the one car that I talked about yep. in our podcast. I said, you know, realistically... The one car that like actually does have appeal to me is this Supra with a manual now that they're offering with a manual. Again, there's nothing wrong with the ZF. If I wanted a daily driver sports car mm -hmm. and like money was really no object, well, I mean, I guess, I don't know if I, like money, no object may be a whole different ballpark, but like with like realistic Within means. reason. Yeah, yeah, within reason. Yeah. I would fucking, I would fucking daily the shit out of one of these with, a, with an auto <laughs> ZF. I would. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you, any, anywhere where you could potentially have any traffic, like, but you want to have a sports car, mm -hmm. that thing with the ZF is awesome. Right. But my budget isn't like, I can go buy two Supras. My budget's like, okay, if I'm going to buy a car, like, right. I can, buy, I can yeah. make this work for one Supra. So I'm going to go with a manual. Yep. I guess, I don't know if you guys are like gathering like where this is like heading towards, but by, probably by the time this airs, I will have an order in for a Supra. <laughs> I was already calling dealerships yep. today. I'm so pumped. To, to, to yeah, see same. who can take an order at MSRP. But, um, you know, I, obviously it was pending how it went with, with actually seeing the car in person and everything else, but like, I'm sold. Even before I went out on the test drive, just seeing the damn thing in person, seeing that the interior presents so much nicer in person. Um, I knew he was sold when he called me yesterday because he's so excited <laughs> about this, about today and shooting this super. He's talking my ear off for, for like half an hour about this thing. Oh man. Well, you know what it is? Is like, I was just like looking at him yeah. and like, I found, I found like, a couple shots of them on some nice workmeister oh ones. I'm like, oh my god! Like, <laughs> it had, but like, I I wanted a Gen Five Viper, right? But that that fantasy, and they were coming down in price. Like, they were down to like seventy thousand when I was watching the price, and I'm like, oh man! Like, once they're in the sixties, like this could be a car like I'll spring for. And then like then the whole COVID thing happened, and like the whole like Used sports car, car thing. thing yeah. uh, they're they're outrageous. They have rod bearing issues. It seems like like it's just like it, it's off the table. It's also massive. It's <laughs> man, it's 176 inches. It's two inches longer than oh, this. Wow. It's not that long. It's wide. Yeah. But like there's hangups. It has a 355 rear tire. Like I want a hoon car. <laughs> Right? This is like a Japanese Viper that's like hoonable. Like they built this fucking car around mm -hmm. like hooning. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to have a 355 steamroll tire. Like if I bought a Gen 5, I was like, I'm going to like get custom wheels, man. I'm going to run like a fucking, you know, 315 or 305 <laughs> rear tire on just so I can like hoon it a little bit better. Oh, man. The wine's really kicking in right yeah. now. So like, <laughs> forgive me. Um, but. This car checks so many boxes for something that, like, I've been, like, hoping for, right? And, like, even, like, Tommy Fiat came by here the other day in his, in his uh, 911 Turbo S, 997. Beautiful car. The interior is cool on it. It's not gigantic like the new cars. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe I should look into getting a Porsche. But, like, rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive. I'm sorry. Rear engine, all-wheel drive. Those don't work for me. Yeah. Front engine, rear-wheel drive does. Aluminum block, you know, yes, this is a true FR car, but like it drives completely different than my Z4. My Z4, like the, the front and the All rear, the like do front. not feel like yep. they work together. They, like this was tuned in South Carolina. It, it's not, it doesn't drive like a conventional M car. You can feel some of the like underpinnings in there, but like the suspension doesn't like work. This thing is so god darn sorted out of the box. It's like, this is an easy build. 
bolt-ons, tune, wheels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lowering springs to work with the stock electronic adjustment and some camber adjustment. This thing is like fucking tint. Sorry, I'm like, I'm really like rambling here. <laughs> oh, dude, it's great. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. I agree. I agree 100%. And I think that's why I didn't question me going and seeing one in person. Because like you said, I was doing the same thing, right? Like, and probably everyone else is online, looking at comments, looking at reviews. And it's so much different when you're actually seeing it in person and experiencing yourself. You're touching the leather, you're touching the steering wheel, and you actually get in it and you hear it for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, it changes that experience of you seeing it on, you know, a, TV, a computer monitor, right? Or yeah. on your phone. So immediately I was sold from just even just the presence of the vehicle, right? It wasn't like, oh, I'm looking at a, a, a another vehicle, you know, a well, real-wheel drive vehicle. An M2. People are like, oh, that's just a BMW. This thing is like, what is that? It right. has street presence. Right. Sorry, go ahead. No, and you're right. That's it, it didn't hit me where I'm like, I'm actually looking at a Supra. Like, this is a Supra. Yep. You know, it has a lot of history behind that. It has everything. All It checks all the boxes that you would expect in a Supra, right? It has, I believe, way better, way better looks than the MK4. You look at a stock MK4, it just looks like a big... It looks like a big pick to me, right? It's it's pretty, but like yeah, it's, it's not it's not really turning that many heads. People correct. who know it are gonna be like, "Oh shit, is That's, that a Supra? Correct. Is that a Supra? Yeah, correct. right." But, but like, when you look at this, you're like, "What is that?" And yeah. then you see the the Supra tag on the back, and you're just like, "Wow, that was actually a Toyota Supra." And people still to this day, they're like, "This is a Toyota." I'm like, "This is a Toyota." <laughs> yeah, like, and they're like, "Wow," because you're not you don't see design cues like this in any modern car. No, and no. like. Personally, for me, I feel like BMW really had, you know, the entire car game with the way their cars looked, right? They've always tried to make a very big statement when they're releasing M3 or M4, especially the design cues. They're very aggressive. They're very, this, you look at it any angle, you're just like, wow, they really took the time to design this car and make it look one of a kind, right? In a sense. And for the money. <clears throat> yeah. It's like for, for that money, much money, you can... like you can't get this level of like exotic appeal. Mm -hmm. You just can't. And let's just talk about that ass. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, it's got like the nicest ass. <laughs> it's, it's sick. Looking at those rear fender arches, like through the mirror while you're driving and just seeing the, the bulge in the hood while you're driving, like it, yeah. it just feels proper. Yeah. This feels, car is looks... beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Phallic hood, yep. big long penis wiener hood. Yeah, I said it. I love it. I love That's it like too. the fourth time you've said it. <laughs> Double bubble roof. Cues yeah. from the FDR7, yeah. the Z4M, my Mugen top on the on the S2000. Double bubble is awesome. Not only is it a functional aero piece, it looks great. Mm -hmm. Fastbacks. I love fastback cars. This is a proper sports car. And it's like, it's got that cheater car factor. It just does everything so god darn well, like right out of the box. Correct. Amazing, amazing base car. And that's, yep. that's where I was probably dumbfounded, right? Because we've all modded cars, and that's the reason why we get into cars. We want to modify. We want to see what we can get out of them. As soon as I got in this car and I drove it, I was like, there's absolutely nothing I need to do to this need car. To. Yeah. I was like, I don't need to do anything to this car. I can actually enjoy this car for two years, three years, and not have changed one thing besides maybe tires and wheels, like you said. Yeah. And I would still be happy about the performance and the package that comes out of that car. It, and this is coming from like a 350Z, right? Because like yeah. in 2003, a Nissan 350Z was like a really cool performance car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was something that like really wasn't shown to the world at that point. Like a naturally aspirated torquey V6 mm -hmm. that and made Japanese like car that over 200 that, yeah. horsepower or two, over 250 horsepower. But it's like you see like there's a ton of areas to address on that car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this thing, it's like, holy, like, no. You really don't have to. If you're maxing out this car's performance on the street, like you're you're insane. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you're, you're, like you're, you're going pretty fast. Yeah. And, and I, we're, I'm not talking about like, you know, people who live in Texas and are driving out on the highway and racing like freaking Hellcats or whatever. Like that that's that's completely different. That's not what this car is about. That's one aspect yeah. of the yeah. car. Though. Exactly. It's like this does everything yeah. so well, and it offers it in like a package that's like real, you know, really like not that bad considering what you're getting out of it. Right. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even use the word not that bad because honestly, I don't. It seems it, like a bargain. There's nothing that you can technically compare this with, like you said, in the price range and for what you get. Right? Well, I say this in like, I never thought I'd, 
I consider spending fucking sixty thousand dollars on a car. <laughs> but like, I'm like, all right, like it's mm -hmm. worth it. Mm -hmm. This like checks so many boxes. Like mm -hmm. I can just, I will actually justify buying a one a brand new car. I never bought a brand new car. Mm -hmm. And two, like I will justify spending MSRP. And I'm not even gonna negotiate. Just get, just sell it to me an MSRP. Like I'm good. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, it, it, it offers that much level of appeal. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't believe, like, it's so funny. Like you just think that you know it all and you've seen it all. And then it's like, man, like something comes along. You're just like, all right, that's a game changer. It, it really is. I, Cause like I, I, like I was saying earlier, I was looking at an M2, um, looking at an M3, M4. Uh, and then one of my dream cars was a Nissan GTR, right? Yep. But I knew the Nissan GTR wouldn't do it for me, right? It's a big body. It's 4,000 pounds. It's not real wheel drive. It's all wheel drive. Yep. Even if I did disconnect or did whatever tuning to remove the front, I didn't want to do all that. I, right. I wanted to get into a car that I don't have to think about the mods that I need to do or I need to change this. I wanted to get in something that I can literally just turn on and go. And if someone said, hey, let's go on the track tomorrow, I can be like, I'll be ready. Yeah, and I would feel completely comfortable driving this on the track with no problem and driving back home. And like the GTR is a big car. It's a huge car <laughs> right? compared to this, like compared to the cars we drive. Even a, even a <laughs> 992 or whatever the new model GT3 is, right? Like They're big. They've gotten big. That checks a lot of boxes, like high revving, naturally aspirated, manual transmission, comfortable, pretty, like it, it, one, like probably the best, like Porsche, I will say, probably does the best setups, right? Out mm -hmm. of the box right now mm -hmm. for modern cars. But it's 180 inches long. That's a big sports car. It's $180,000. <laughs> and yeah. it's 100, I mean, forget the money. Like it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a club I'm not willing to pay the cost of entry to get into. But like, I remember when the Arc States came out and I was like, oh my God, these cars are huge. But this is me coming from, I would drive my NBA Mia Miata around at night, go to the Mazda dealer and like, look at the new Arc States on the lot. And I was like, parking next to them. Like, oh my God, the Arc States a giant turd. But it's like, when I was dailying, the RX-8, I was like, and I park it next to like a modern Prius. I'm like, wow, the rx eight's like small. It looks good. It's like, you know, it's got that weight where it's not terribly heavy, but like it's, it's good. So the fact that this Supra is the same length as the RX-8 and lower and wider, like that's, those are like, those proportions are, are awesome. I'm sure, I don't know what the Z is offhand, but I can almost guarantee the Z is a bigger car than this. Because Nissan is always about bigger cars. The GTR is a big car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I parked next to the 350 and I look at it and I'm like, this is crazy that the 350 is just as big or bigger. Um, wow. Especially when it's lowered as well because this still sits just about as low as the... Yeah. Which is crazy, right? Because I would have never thought of that. Like stock, the way this car sits is just phenomenal. It's honestly phenomenal. And for what you get. Like... You almost like, it's like not even like one of those like cars where you have to like lower immediately. You don't. You don't. But like a little bit of lower will of like course. look nice. And that's yeah. just because that's who yeah. we are. That's, right? what we, that's what we're used to. Yeah. We're used to like, you know, a little bit of, little right. bit of fender gap. Right. So, yeah. I mean, to sum this all up, Quinn, <laughs> buy it already. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally, like I already called a bunch of dealers today before he came here. Um, it's Wednesday. I'm not that this matters because this is going to air at a later date, but mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm allocating time on Friday to go to a dealer and put an order in. And like, you know, there's one I'm waiting to hear back on. They're going to, they're offering to do it at MSRP. They're just waiting to see if they can give me an allocation because it's probably going to be a 2024 and there's going to be a wait. And there's another one that said they'll do it for two grand over MSRP. And like, even with the two grand markup, I'm willing to pay that. Um, not that I want to. And I think that's bullshit because yep. they don't have the car, but like, you know, the if, they yeah, they're, they're the making their money off Camrys and Corollas and all that other crap. But why do they need to mark up the Supra? But what I'm saying is, is like <laughs> worst case scenario, right? I mean, I've never bought a brand new sports car. So this would be my like mint mm -hmm. fresh slate. I don't have to deal with anybody's previous bull crap. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they're done with this in 2025. And who the hell knows what modern day sports cars are going to look mm -hmm. like with a manual after that. It's gonna be sad. Okay. And there's, a, and I want to say one more thing. There's a video that I watched, and I don't, I can't remember the name of the channel. There is an awesome channel. There's somewhere overseas in Europe. 
They did a best motoring tribute with the A91 Super Manual, and the kid, he can drive. He's like hooning the thing up and down these like twisty back roads, and it just looks like pure bliss right out of the box. And like watching that damn video is probably what really sold me on this car. I was like, <laughs> holy shit, that car looks like it's set up phenomenal for like fun hooliganism, like right out of the box. If you mm -hmm. just type in A91 Super Manual Best Motoring, you will get that kid's video, and it's awesome. So kudos to whoever you are. You probably don't even speak English, but, like, the video's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like, even seeing or having people drive the car and actually seeing their experience, it's always, they're, they're mm -hmm. giggling, right? They're, they're just like, I can't believe. It's just so good. It just makes all the right sounds. It, 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 it you know, it feels right. Especially with all the technology, right? Yeah. You don't have, you have electronic steering. You have all of that stuff that is in the way between you and the road, right? And I never felt disconnected, really. Mm -hmm. Never at one point where I felt not confident in putting this car into that turn or going at this speed into that turn. Like, I felt very confident, especially braking, right? Like, very impressed with how I can go from zero to 60 very quickly. Um, oh, yeah. Especially with these tires. Like, I, can, I know, already know with the small upgrades, this car was just going to be phenomenal, especially whatever I put it through. So, I drove it at like an eight tenths pace, mm -hmm. like conservative, because like whatever. Like, and we didn't film this because like it was just a quick ride. Like, it, it's I I don't want anything to happen. I'm getting older, <laughs> and like consequences just weighing way too much. Like for driving like a maniac on the street. Like, right. mm -hmm. but it the limits of this car are very high, very high. Again, that insert that like cheater car factor. Like, it's plenty. That's why, like, I was saying to you, like, I don't even think you need coilovers. No. No. If there's a system that allowed that, like, you can work with the, with the sport adjustment on here, like, mm -hmm. HKS makes one. There's a couple other companies that's, like, less than 1000 bucks. Like, that's, that's probably plenty. Cause it, it, and especially the new ones come with Michelin Pilot Super Sports. So if they're valuing the suspension for a, a Pilot Super Sport out of the box. Any tire like, you get is going to, in any spring rate, like, it's going to be fine. It's fine. Yep. And I'm sure the lowering springs like are a, still a slight increase in spring mm -hmm. rate. It's probably perfect to do that. Unless you're, again, unless you're like all out time attacking the car where every 10th counts, like I think that set is probably going to be perfect. And I'm so excited because like I've never had a car like this. I've never had a car where I didn't have to modify every freaking thing exactly. on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, this is like almost like, a, and that's why I like, I like the motorcycle so much is because like, it's like, okay, you get the bike. There's really not much to do for suspension because they're all pretty <laughs> it's damn good. Ridiculous, yeah. you know. And it's like you do the you do the exhaust, the lightweight mods, some carbon shit, and like tuning, and you're done. And it's like this is very very close to that. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I agree. I'm so stoked. I'm mm -hmm. like I'm, I haven't been this juiced up about a car in like God knows how long. <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, I know. I'm excited for you. I am honestly super and we're, excited. And, and we're going to do the whole build on, on the channel. So every single sneaking mod that goes into that, we'll, we'll, we'll be documenting. And I will be here doing the same mods. And then, <laughs> and then it feel, yeah, and, and it's going to be cool to like benchmark with Felix's. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yep. Now it's going to be fun. I, I'm going to definitely enjoy this journey with this car, honestly. Dude, like, I just can't get over how like sharp this car is. Yeah. Because I even say, like, if you look at the doors and down to where the actual bottom lip hits, just that oh, we're getting hot. curve. It Is it still looks, recording? It's still recording, oh, but sorry. We're, we're getting hot. I'm it's, sorry. No, no, I'm just saying just, like, the door, just the design of how that pokes out the bottom, where it meets the lip. Oh, it's, it's wild. Just, it's just beautiful. It's just even beautiful. if that vent is fake and doesn't do <laughs> shit, <laughs> it's still a wild design. Yes, yes. No, it's, it's honestly, I've, I I. I Every time I park it, I'm always turning back. I'm looking oh, yeah. at it, and right. I'm like, I do not regret ever buying this car. Ever, 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 ever. And I know I'm going to feel that same way years down the road, right? Where I'm going to look back like, wow, this was probably the last modern car that you can actually buy that was great right out the door. We had technical difficulties. <laughs> Matthew's camera overheated and yeah, shut off. It did. <laughs> it needs a coolant system yeah. upgrade. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Quinn or Toyota, give Quinn a Supra, let him buy one, let just, him spend his just money. Just sell me one. Yep. <laughs> I'm really excited. I never thought that, I didn't think that there'd be a modern day sports car that I would can actually consider buying, especially not one brand new. And like for the first time ever in my life, I'm considering buying, or 
I'm like pretty content on buying one brand new. Um, I'm stoked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like up there with you, honestly. Even though I already have one, I'm excited for you to get one, personally. And I'm so happy that you came by today. Definitely. It's, it's been a while, and, uh, oh, yeah. and you, taught, you taught me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me teaching you. You taught me about the car, yeah. um, and I'm, I'm, I'm in. Yeah. I'm so happy. I'm, I, that's the first, honestly. I would have to say the first I've ever convinced <laughs> that you know this is a, a, a wonderful car honestly so, yeah hell yeah awesome Good. so it's been great meeting you great yep. meeting you yep. as well we will we will it's going to be a while probably before i get one but um we'll the take orders you along through every for every step yeah. by, by the time this this airs i should have an order in so and i don't care whatever like if i gotta wait i gotta wait but as long as i get one like I said, I'm going to enjoy this journey. Really and, <laughs> and Felix and I are going to do a, a build-off. I would. I'm down for that. And we're going to film it, <laughs> and we will do comparisons, and we will Definitely. do races, and like all the things that we can do that's relevant for yes. our Supras together. So uh, we will definitely bring Felix back and uh, do some more content with his beautiful, Definitely. beautiful A90. Yes. Supra. So that is it for that's this it one, guys. For this one. We're going in. Matthew's closing it out. Done. <laughs> Before it overheats again.